Hello and welcome back. This is the final, final part. I'm going to do to finish up and close up the um, movie, but I'm also going to read the lyrics to a song the Lord brought my attention to um, last night. God's been putting this word together for the past two days. So, hold on, I'm going to give you this. Um... So you got to be careful of the things in which you are idolizing. Do not rush. If God's going to open the door, you must walk through the process so you have the character to carry what it is you're called to walk in. Wherever the, the door for idolization is, the enemy will walk you right through it. Whether the idolization is in your work, in your pursuits of work. Just like how she was pursuing trying to build this, this, um, what you would call it? What in the world did you, what the word do you call it? Uh, marriage counseling business. So she was idolizing her advancement. Money. What are you willing to compromise to get it? This woman compromised her entire marriage. Because she wanted the pretty things and the lush and the luxury of being able to have her own business. She compromised her job. She compromised everything. Your love life. This woman sacrificed her marriage for a relationship with a man that didn't really want her. He was just using her until he got what he wanted and still ended up dropping her. Family. You could literally mess up your family family in pursuit of something that ain't yours I remember hearing about hearing the story of a family mem member to somebody I used to know where they went and they got married to somebody and made the decision to leave their children in the United States in pursuit of this relationship so she sacrificed being a mother to her kids to be married to this man, not a job, not a what have you. She left the kids to be married to a man. This is what sacrifice of family looks like. Um, it will be a gift with stipulations. Look at how Harley treated her. He started to woo her. He started to do all of these things to her in order to get her to where he wanted her. And then once he got it, he dropped her. That was the stipulation. And remember, he got her caught on drugs. So he knew that she was going to keep coming back because of the drugs. Thereby, you sell your soul to the devil. So with that being said, I think I uncovered all of the points. Yeah, that was the last one. So I'm going to go to the song. Hold on. I'm not going to be able to give you the full lyric because I can't pull it up where I can see it right now. But um, it starts off with the statement. There's no doubt you're a rose. The enemy will always bring a person into your life that looks beautiful. I remember hearing a man say this one time that um, sometimes women are like roses. They're beautiful at face value, but they're full of thorns. The enemy will bring to you someone of your liking, your taste, your flavor exactly what you want but they will be poisonous okay they're full of venom they're full of darkness you gotta watch out for these people because this is what harley was in this film next uh Yeah, you're just my type. God's going to... God's trying to send you your type. The enemy is going to send you exactly what you think is your type. 
what your eyes want. Remember, pride is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. These were the three temptations that Jesus was tempted by. Yes? So if it looks like something you want, question and make sure that that's not something that the enemy sent you. Ever notice anybody that's really on this kingdom journey, raise your hand. Your daughter dang spouse is not somebody you would have actually chose under any circumstances whatsoever. They weren't on your list. They wouldn't have been somebody that you would chose from age to race to uh, background to status to uh, what they called to do. None of it. None of you. Because you wasn't thinking that far nor that high. The fact that the Lord showed you, if the Lord showed you somebody that has any level of status, praise Jesus. Because that means that the Lord has belief in you that you can reach that high. Okay? But the enemy is going to bring somebody to you that matches that. And I guess now it's time for me to say this. That's going to fit you in what it is that is already where you are. Let me tell you this quick little story. When I was in New York, the Lord showed me who my husband was. Now, I made a little bit of a mistake. I told a friend of mine at the time who was a Christian who my husband was. I did not understand at the time. You're not supposed to share that with everybody. I was learning. But catch this. I remember one time making the thought process. It would be a nice. I thought it. And I believe the Lord allowed me to think it because he was warning me that this was coming. I like locks. You see me in locks. Locks is my thing. But I'm not sure I thought I would like my partner in locks or not. But thought crossed my mind about my partner having locks. I lie to you not. Let me tell you. Is God is my witness. Within 24 hours of me having that thought, I ran into a man that looked identical to my God ordained spouse. When I say identical, I mean if you looked him in the face. The face, face. The face, face, face. Face. He looked just like, I mean, real stare, stare this man down type. Because when my friend, we, we were having dinner at the Whole Foods that night. And she said, oh my God, that guy looks just like him. And I'm like, oh, little girl, stop playing. She's like, no, look, he looks just like him. I was like. And this guy was literally sitting at a table behind us. I turn around. Here this dude is. He's sitting there at his computer working on, and here's the catch. The thing he was working on was similar to the thing that my God ordained spouse actually does as a career. This is how the devil do. He puts exactly what you're looking for in front of you. And this guy looked just like my God ordained spouse, but he had locks. Long, beautiful locks too. But he was in the same circumstance I was at the time. Meaning we would have done nothing for each other but kept each other in the exact same space. That's how the devil play you. That's exactly how the devil play you. So I met this dude and I'm like, oh my goodness. Now remember, I already done told you about the time towards the beginning of this about the guy that I met at the a business event look just like my husband. That was the first interaction with somebody that resembled my God ordained spouse. So I've seen people that look like my God ordained spouse. I've seen people that look like my ex. I've seen people that look like my ex that were in a better financial situation than my ex look identical to my ex. You know, <laughs> Huh. I've even seen older gentlemen in the age range of my God or dang spouse that look just like my ex. <laughs> Dressed like them too. I was like, dang, devil be playing 
When I say the devil play, the devil knows your type. If he can get you to slip up. Why would you want to date somebody that's identical to your ex? Ew. But in some cases, the counterfeit is identical to your ex. That counterfeit was sent to your ex in order to turn them away from you. So by the time you came into the picture, they'd have been like, all right, she looked too much like her. <laughs> That's why the Lord has had you dumb yourself down a little bit. Because some of y'all was used to being me. I liked my business attire presence look with long, straight hair, big earrings, lipstick, all that kind of stuff. And God's had me get your natural hair back in order, get your... Because he likes that. And see, I know this because of the fact that God started giving me a um, compliment. Sometimes the Lord will give you compliment in a season. And both of Christ talked about this, that he'll give you compliment through other people in a season. The other day I was coming up on the elevator and a man saw me who had locks and he saw me with this hair. And when he saw me with this hair, he said, I love a woman that has natural hair. And he would not stop talking about my hair. But see something interesting. I know about my God ordained spouse. My God ordained spouse likes natural women. So he's not all the way for all of the hair and all of the... He ain't really for all that. He wants the person to be real in themselves. Some of us have been worried about that factor. And God's trying to say, no, nah, you ain't got to worry about that. They ain't worried about that. Not to mention what they dated was a counterfeit of you. So that counterfeit probably did all that stuff. And God's saying, you concerned about looking like this. And this is what he wants. <laughs> Okay, just for knowledge's sake. So what's this next line in this song? Um, you know your way around. Bathsheba knew her way around. She had the ability to do what she did because she had means, resources, so on and so forth. Harley was able to do what he did because he had means, resources. He had the ability to upgrade this woman more than where she was with her husband. Some of your God of Daniel spouses do have means, but some of you are looking at their means some of these people in these industries, and I'm going to tell you this straightly, they say it all the time. They're in the industry. They have access. They're surrounded by these people, but they money ain't like that. Some of you got it ain't spouses. They've been growing from the bottom up. It's not to say that they don't have investments, property, so on and so forth, but that's where they money went. So you might come to find out that you got it ain't spouse. He got stuff, but he's been in treating his money a little bit different than these people that run around here on lavish yachts and all that type of stuff. Some of that stuff has been a gift to him. Other that some other that stuff, it ain't been like that. Meaning, he ain't living like you think he might be, just because they got access. Some of y'all are called to live with, to be married to influencers, real estate agents, community leaders, so on and so forth. They got the access. But they ain't got it like that where you thinking that they sitting up there in uh, mega mansions and going around on yachts. If they're on a yacht, they probably were invited. <laughs> Some of them, if God, let's just take this moment. Do you know if God has blessed you with favor? You think your God today's spouse wasn't blessed with favor that people weren't favoring him in the industry that he was in? Whatever that industry is. You know, real estate agents have access to celebrities too. And a lot of them, especially if they get a good deal, that celebrity is going to gift them with something. 
community leaders, especially those ones that work with celebrities that are doing philanthropy efforts with them, then people are gifting them stuff. They can't accept gifts from constituents. Of course not. But some of them really are, are getting gifts from these high level people. So some of these people have access, but they personally ain't got it like that. I remember listening to Fantasia. She was making a point of saying, yes, I'm out here in the cars. Yes, I got the clothes. Yes, I'm out here doing all of this kind of stuff. But I go home. Now, she got a nice house right now, but she's like, Sometimes our money don't match what our life look like. Some of your spouses, they may have an externally gorgeous life, but that does not mean that's how it is. You know, you remember back in the day when cribs used to come on? I remember hearing that certain celebrities used to rent out houses, meaning they were renting out this property because they couldn't show you where they actually live. And they were showing you that because it fit the observation of what you were looking at that's why i ain't had no nothing in the refrigerator because they ain't had, it was a, a setup spot they ain't living like that i forgot the one that actually admitted and told everybody that there was a celebrity that literally said that while they were on video tape <laughs> some of your spouses ain't living like that some of y'all gonna be living very regular lives very regular they might have a condo. They might even have a nice house. But it ain't going to be, ooh, are you ready for that? Just because they look like or have been in association does not mean that they got it like everybody they're associated with. They got access, but it don't mean that their life look like that. Are you prepared for that? And then are you also prepared that because of certain things that they had to release and let go of, they might be demoting themselves, meaning God's bringing them down from where they are right now. Meaning they gonna have a home, but it's not gonna be what what they've been in is gonna be in something a little bit lesser. One because they've got to save money to prepare for the family and the children that y'all are gonna bring in, and they had to release a certain amount of stuff to get rid of the things that were contaminated by what have you. So they got a completely different thing going on. So what you thought they had, they ain't even going to have that. It's going to be demoted a little bit lower so that they can rebuild to build up to what's necessary for you and your kids. So they can put the money away so that they can get the house. So they may be operating in a season. Y'all don't have kids right now. So y'all might be in a condo where he's saving the money to put into the house that he wants to put y'all in. And God's organizing his steps to do that so be prepared you might you might be walking into a condo instead of a mansion at first uh. and some of these men because of the way that their life runs if they don't find it as a necessity they might not have had it meaning they might have chosen to have a smaller place because they're on the road all the time so they're in big hotel rooms but when they come home their house is only what they need when they're home and if they got two properties they may have this house but have another property that's over there so it may not look like what you think it's gonna look like you understand what i'm saying So they understand how they understand their way around in their environment. Uh, so that was the end of what I can give you for the lyrics for that. If I'm able to, I'll come back and get the rest of the lyrics when I'm fully attached to the internet. I don't know why I can't get them. But um, these are all things that you need to be aware of because it's those things that open doors for the enemy to use this and whisper in your ear, hey, they ain't got that. Hey, they blah, blah, hey, blah, blah, blah. 
to get your eyes wandering. This woman's eyes wandered in this film. And because her eyes wandered, she opened herself up to being able to be deceived by the serpent, just like Eve, which led her astray and out from under the covering of God and her marriage. So this was entire thing was a warning. This may be something for y'all later. This is some, something for y'all now. Be aware. And I'm also going to link um, the word I did talking about people slipping up and being like, oh, I'm going to marry somebody else or get hooked up with somebody else while I'm waiting for uh, my spouse to show up. I mean, there was a whole big warning, warning in that too. No, no, no. Don't be doing these dumb things. No, no. No, no. These are all doors. I could make this word more relevant. These are all things you're going to fight when you get into your marriage and things that you're probably fighting right now as you're waiting for it to manifest. Okay? Keep your eyes and ears open. The marriage is coming. It is. But also understand when you get into it, don't rest on your laurels. Because there may be people lurking and seeking you out afterwards in order to lead you astray. Keep your discernment proficient because the enemy's still out here and the enemy is still lurking. Okay? Be aware so that you don't screw up after you get your blessing. Don't, do not have waited all this time to get your God a Dane spouse. And because things don't look how you think that they should look, because you want to operate in the spirit of pride and you want to uh, not understand the process your spouse is trying to take you through, you turn around there and be like, ooh, look, somebody is trying to take me in this direction and give me all of this. No, wait for, wait for what belongs to you. Well, for Christ also did a word talking about, please wait. Don't take the bait of what the enemy is bringing to you, whatever that offer is, because it's more worthy of waiting for what God gave you or God is giving you than to take the bait of some uh, male Bathsheba that just wants you because they want to find out what they can find out from you, gain information from you, get your body get you to operate in sin to see if you're, if you really are that strong with God and to ruin your testimony. Don't do it. Don't do it, please. So, um, I hope this blessed you and I'm finally done. I believe <laughs> if I come back with the song temptation, I'll finish the rest of it in, uh, the next one when I have the ability to get to an internet signal. So, um, and I can open it up like that. But other than that, uh, I thank you for listening. So until next time, peace, love, and blessings. Much love, faith, peace, and blessings to you.